little smarter about what we're rendering. So instead of just rendering everything in the periphery, we could say just render key game elements. So you know, a mission objective or a radar screen getting rendered in the periphery. <laughs> or we can. So here we're just rendering, you know, bullets or a sword. Yeah. Or. So now you don't need a radar screen anymore. You can tell where someone is when they're firing at you just using your peripheral vision. We can also, instead of displaying everything all over your furniture, we can just find that nice flat white wall behind your TV and put the game, the virtual reality, behind your TV. You can also change the appearance of your room. So this is what your living room looks like. Now imagine you're playing uh, black and white video games. You're playing L.A. Noir. Well, your room is black and white. So you're playing Toy Story. <laughs> or maybe Portal. So these are literally shaders that are running in your living room. Uh, anything you do in a game, you can now do in uh, reality. So besides just changing uh, the appearance of the room, you can distort reality entirely. You can also combine these things together. So the virtual world is behind us, the game. Then we have physical reality, our furniture. And now we don't know what's virtual, what's physical. All of those examples uh, assume that we have source code uh, access to the content. But if we don't have source code, we can actually do some simple things. So this is just an infinitely moving grid. And it moves with the camera. So the idea here is just to induce apparent motion, so make you feel like you're moving in the game. And this can actually be hooked up with any video game. So we can take an existing video game, we can uh, figure out what the camera is doing via either optical flow on the camera image or via the controller input, and then we can use that to drive our illusion. So we've hooked this up to existing games like Portal, Borderlands, etc. You could imagine doing a space game, and you're flying through space, you get that nice sense of motion. So moving to a less violent example, you're playing a game, it's snowing in the game, it's snowing in your living room. So the speed of the snowflakes are affected by the speed of the race car. Uh, so if I go to the right, the snowflakes start coming from the right, and if I back up, so the snowflakes are actually accumulating on your living room furniture. So here, we're running a physics simulation. Each one of the snowflakes is a particle, and we use the 3D geometry of the Kinect captures to make it snow in your living room. So you can get these nice magical game experiences in your physical environment. A more direct example of that idea, imagine you're playing Call of Duty. So somebody throws a grenade at you. The grenade oh, rolls out good. of the screen and into your physical world. So instead of having a little icon on the screen, you know, it just rolls out into your world. The interesting thing to note here is after the grenade leaves the screen, uh, we have no idea where it's going to go. So it's an entirely physics-based simulation. So that uh, would change based on the layout of the room. We just take whatever velocity the grenade is moving at and then transfer it from the TV into the physical world. So there's obviously interesting game design implications there. So another way to change the appearance of your room so we have a little race car example, uh, and like any game, it has a bunch of virtual light sources. These virtual light sources can be made into physical light sources. So this is a very crude example, uh, but ideally anything you do with lighting in a game, you can now do with lighting in your living room. So using it, you know, thematically doing soft shadows, hard shadows, different colored light sources. Finally, uh, besides playing video games, you also watch TV on your television. So we can take your 40-inch television and make it a 15-foot television. So here the content was all recorded with a special uh, dual camera rig. So there's two cameras, one that records 1080p content for the TV and another that records HD content for the projected. We can do things like display a virtual scoreboard above the TV so you can offload content from the TV um, and put it into the physical environment. Anything you do in a game, you can do with film. So you can do you know, non-photorealistic rendering um, in the periphery. We can make it just appear on the back wall. We can make the foreground appear as a cartoon. So this is all a rich and flexible design palette uh, for game designers and cinematographers to come play with.
and we're actually we're working with some right now to figure out exactly what the language of this space looks like. Mm -hmm. So besides just extending the TV out into your physical world, we can do more abstract things. No LSD required. <laughs> And with that, we conclude our tour of the Loom Room. That's excellent. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that's really impressive. <laughs>